In this video, we are going to walk you guys through exactly how to locate a product, how we how we go about locating product and how you can go about locating product. And, you know, just simply put in whatever criteria that you are looking for and finding a product that fits your budget that you can actually keep scaling. Now, those of you that are new, welcome to the channel. My name is Bashar Katun. I'm the founder of BJK University, an education company with a mission to impact 1 million lives. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and be doing this uh, video with Lorraine where she's going to share her screen and we're going to simply walk through step by step. So make sure that you have your notebook, your pen, and you're taking a whole bunch of notes throughout this video. So something that many of you guys, you know, should know or, or keep in mind is that when it comes to product research or product research in general, is probably the, the biggest and most important aspect of your business. Finding the right product will literally make or break your business, regardless what tools you have, regardless who's working on your business, regardless who, who's running it, regardless what launch strategy or what anything you know or have, it simply won't work unless your product is a winning product. You really wanna stay tuned for this video. Again, if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing as we drop videos like those every single week. So Lorraine, why don't you take it away and just simply share with us, you know, how you go about finding products and what is kind of one of the one of the most advanced product research methods? Because I know when we were talking about this earlier, when you were showing me how you go about it, it's something that I personally haven't used before and ha I haven't done it this way. So it, it was very interesting. So why don't you kind of take it away and then show us how you do it? OK, there are m there's multiple ways to find a product. We can search other people's websites. So just like, you know, we're spying on their website. What are you doing? I want to know what you're selling. I want to look at what you're doing. I go to uh, Shopify. I go check out Etsy. These a lot of these things are homemade, mm. but they have something similar that's all, already brand made. So I can use that, type it into our program, which we use Helium 10. It gives us so many benefits, so many benefits. And there's a couple of different ways to find products within this platform as well. But what I've been working on is working with these long tail keywords because I noticed something. If I type something into Helium 10, I gave this a shot. I wanted, I'm always looking for new ways. I typed in the word hot dog, okay? I don't plan on selling a hot dog on Amazon. <laughs> Here, buy my weenie, you know, no. <laughs> so what I did was I wanted to see what would pop up. And lo and behold, what popped up was like these little carnival hot dog machines. Mm. And I noticed that Pepsi was selling it too. So yeah. I'm like, hmm, this is something. So I noticed there was a lot of Amazon selling it. So I'm like, I, I definitely leave. When I see Amazon is the seller, I leave because we why, don't want to compete. Why want to compete so with Amazon. <laughs> you do not want to compete with Amazon. Mm -mm. It's their platform. I'm a loose. <laughs> okay. I'm looking for regular FBA sellers. I want to compete with the FBA sellers Got because it. Amazon has an edge over them. Us. It's their platform. So we just let that go. Never okay, so be you, afraid to stop so just, looking. Just, just, to, just to kind of put it out there, you want to compete with FBA sellers. You do not want to compete with Amazon. Got it. Correct. Okay. Correct. You know, if there's one or two in there and there's like 10 FBAs, yeah, I, I have no problem with that. But if I see a bunch of Amazon there, any, if I see three Amazon, I run. Nope. Got it. Bye. And okay. a, a lot of times people, uh, here's the thing when it comes to your product, okay? We're not selling what you want. Okay, we're selling what the people who are going That's to wrong. Amazon want. Yes. I see people, oh, I want to do baby product. I want to sell bibs. I want to sell bibs. Yeah. Well, look it up and see how thick that niche is. Yeah. Okay. And it's not what you want. If you want baby bibs, go buy them, you know, but don't sell them if the numbers don't make sense. We always, always stay loyal to those numbers. Yep. That's what gets you the best advantage. Okay. So I typed this in and I ended up starting with the word hot dog and I ended up with a washing machine tray. Got it. So one product can lead to another, can lead to another, can lead to another. And the, the thing was on the washing machine tray, the numbers were amazing. If I didn't want that big of an item, I would have sold it. But I don't want something that big. It costs more in FBA fees and I would have to work on my strategy. OK, so what you're saying is that big, bulky products cost more money in FBA fees. Yes. Got it. Okay. They go by measurement and weight too, and they take a percentage. So, and we have to have it stored. And if you don't, if you don't sell your products because you're not learning how to sell your product properly, then you can run into another month's storage fees. Okay. And, and, and what you're saying is that the only thing that a seller should be loyal to is the numbers. So be the loyal numbers. to the numbers. Absolutely. I can have two products. 
two products and I cover them up and I look at all the numbers on this one and this is the one you want to sell. You just love this product. And this one has amazing numbers. Got oh it. my gosh. Low reviews, great revenues, not hardly any sellers. And you can get your foot in the door on this and make some good money. You peel back. And what is it? Oh, this is the baby bibs that you want to sell. And this is a wrench. Okay. The wrench is what I sell. <laughs> I don't care what it is. As long as the numbers look good, we always stay loyal to the numbers. Awesome. Okay. This is the tool that we like to use and it's called Helium 10. And this allows us to search for products. I love this one because when I find a product, it's linked to Amazon. I can see everybody's products. I can see all their revenues. I can see how much they sell a month, which is going to be great for me too, because then I know how much I need to stock. I need to compete with people that I can, uh, if I'm gonna, they're selling like 2000 a month and I'm starting with 500, I may run out of stock. So I have to be very careful with that too. And I can see whether or not Amazon is the big seller. So what I've been working on is looking at long tail keywords. Long tail, key, long, long tail keywords is, is what to look for. That's what I'm doing for this one. Uh, you can do shorter ones, but I like the long ones because what I noticed is within the algorithm here, it's gonna start pulling up mixing and matching and finding actually different products than I type in. So what I'm gonna look for, and I haven't done this, I've done a search, but that's as far as I've gone. We need to see something with, we're, we're trying to find products that stay within the criteria of 5,000 to 20,000. Now, it doesn't matter to me if it says 100,000 up there or an NA for not enough data because I'm going to punch the criteria and it's going to force the keywords that others are using to come forward. And I'll show you how that's done. Lorraine, so right now, yeah. 5,000 to 20,000 monthly search volume for a keyword, correct? Yes, that's correct. Great. Awesome. So that Thank means you. how many people are searching, how many times people are searching a specific keyword on Amazon per month. And that's, you're saying, make sure that you stay within 5,000 to 20,000 monthly search volume. We need enough search volume, but we need something that people are actually typing on their keyboard to look for this product. Got it. And, and we're so, using Magnet and Helium 10 for this, uh, for, this, for this example. Okay, so all I'm gonna do right now is type in baby blue comforter for boys. That's long. Okay, instead of a blue comforter, because I know blue comforter and run search. So what this is going to bring me generally long tail keywords will bring you up an NA, no search file, not enough data, but that's fine. I'm just getting this out there so I can get to all of these. So you see, I have 4,926 filtered keywords that people are using, and there's a lot of data here. But what we want to do is we want to make the data visible that we want to see. So we're gonna force that information to come forward. So I'm going to put in my search volume. I want my search volume to be at no less than 5,000 people searching and no more than 20,000. I can understand why why no less than 5,000 because you know obviously anything less than that, it's, gonna, it's not gonna have enough demand, but why not more than 20,000? Isn't it the more the merrier? No, not necessarily because the more people that are searching for this, these are the top players that are using these big ones that have 100,000 search volume. So they're paying some good money to be up there on top on those keywords. And you would need a bigger budget, a way bigger budget to compete in that arena. So we right. have to start somewhere and scale up to it. So each keyword we pick is going to be a little bit higher. So when we're doing well in the 5,000 to 20,000 and we want to do a new keyword. We've already have this one that we have. I put it on my back end. So it's like having a wagon. Okay. You pull a wagon and you put a string on it and it has that little can that rattles around as you're going. <laughs> so what I have is this wagon is filled with the keywords that I'm using right now. Behind it is a bigger one. And so when I pull my wagon, I'm actually pulling that keyword up. We're not using it generally. You know, we can drop a small little bit on it, but we're pulling it along to get it to grow a little bit on the back end. So now when we are ready for it, it won't cost as much money in order to get it to work for us. So we don't have to put that much investment into it. Okay. Are there any other parameters that we're going to fill in or are we just going to focus on search volume? 
I'm just going to so I, I do one at a time. Okay. I always do one at a time because I'm only at 4,900. If it was 20,000, I still want to see what's going to come up in this search volume. So I'll just apply the filter. Got it. And see so what just pops start up. with one Perfect. variable at a time. Yep. And look okay. at that. I got 45 keywords to look at. To me, that's good. It's under, it's under 200. It's under 100. So the first thing we need to know is search volume is right here. I'm not going to bring up uh, lowest to highest or anything like that because I already know that it's between 5,000 and 20, no matter what keyword it is. Yep. What I want to see is my competing people. So I'm going to click twice. Look at that. That's high. And then I'm going to click again. This what is it, what I want to see. Can you walk us through what what that means? What, what is this competing yeah. product? So is this how many products there are on the market? These are the ones that people that I will be competing with. Right. So if these people, if I only have 116 out of all the people selling on Amazon, that looks pretty good for to me. Okay. So, so what you're saying is make sure what you're saying is that the less amount of people selling your product, the better, because that means there's less competition that you have to compete with. Absolutely. And it okay. costs me less to get my, myself seen on the front page. Nice. Okay. Absolutely. Right. And look, the first one that pops up is a braided crib bumper i'm like okay the ones i love to pick are what the heck is that yeah. so i'm looking at that it's like what the heck is that those yeah. are good ones so i'm gonna go ahead and click this box and what it's gonna do is it's gonna take me over to amazon oh i got it i see what it is <laughs> so you're you're saying you're saying products that you don't know what they are you can't tell what they are from the name are the products that you're actually more interested in I am more interested in them because a lot of people seem to be typing it in. I have no clue what it is. So my I, my brain is not um, biased. Mm. You know, if it was something like a pot holder, I know what that is. Okay, how am I going to sell pot holders? Oh, what is this? What is that? And it's like this, I have no clue. I'm Got like, it. ooh, there's a lot and of again, possibilities in here. again, it goes back to here. being loyal to just the numbers. If the main exactly. numbers make sense, then go for it. If not, no. That's how I trained myself to look for something that I don't recognize because all I'm paying attention to is the numbers. Nice. Okay. So now I see what this is. And the first thing we want to do is we're going to do what's called an x-ray on this product. Okay? okay. And the reason we want to x-ray it is because I want you to see that we can see the data. And what's x-ray? X-ray is, X -ray is um, we're going to be able to look at uh, the top page and all these sellers here on Amazon, it allows us to, to look at the data of who the sellers are, what is, uh, how much they're selling it for. So I get to know, basically, if I were to sell this product, I'm looking at the prices. I wanna make sure they're consistent. And if this one is uh, outside the norm, like the 62, I wanna know why, what's different about you? But first thing we wanna do is get rid of the SP. Okay, the reason we get rid of SP is they're paying to be on top. I want to see the organic sales. So I'm going to remove them. And I'm also going to remove anything that has nothing to do with what I'm looking at. Okay, so okay? let me just rephrase that. You want to, uh, or emphasize that, you want to remove any sponsored listings, number yes. one. And then number two, you want to remove any listings that are not um, similar to the product you're trying to sell. Right. Like I'm not selling a crib. So I wanted the data on just the products I'm looking at. Got it. And it doesn't look like there's much, but the, uh, up here on top, I think higher paid people are, are, you know, pushing the keyword, but generally I have some good ones up here and I want to see what it says right now. My criteria over here is I put 8,000 in revenues. I want to see that there are, you know, a good amount of people that are making $8,000 in revenues or more. And I want to make sure that they there is a low uh, review count here because this means I have room to move in. Now, if I have a bunch of people that have thousands of reviews on their page, I don't know how I'm going to get in there with a zero, you know. Mm -hmm. But look at this. This looks amazing. Yeah, I haven't I seen see a, a lot of FBA. I, I know this is really good, actually. Yeah. Now it's pretty consistent. Um, I like the one, price point the too. The reason, yeah, the price point is really good, and against the FBA fee, is really good. Yeah. So we're finding a lot in here. Now, yeah. if we want to find other keywords, so basically we want to also look and see 
So I want to see when the creation date, I want to see their sizes. This is why uh, some of the people are more expensive because of the size. Yeah. Uh, it's a large standard versus a small oversized. So this is and why the their way, prices if, are a little different. The, those of you that are watching this, if you're finding this uh, valuable, we actually have uh, um, you know a, a full tutorial that, that goes into exactly how you can how you know how how Lorraine learned everything, how all you know how we've helped all of our students, and and, and you know now we've got over 4,500 students that we're helping uh, every day. Lorraine works with them day by day. Uh, below this video, there is a link that'll take you to a uh, uh, an application form where you can actually get on a call with one of our enrollment advisors one on one and see how we can assist you and if BJK University is a good fit for you. So if that's the case for you, click the link below this video. So Lorraine, you were saying that you wanted to look for, um, you know, for products, you look for their date when they actually were established or when they were created. Why is that important? I want to make sure there's going to be enough data for me to prove whether or not this is not trendy. And how long is that? How long do you want the products to be live for? I like to do a year. <laughs> I like okay, a year so, because a lot of times you have something that just pops up. It's been around for about six months and it can drop off right after that. Got it. So, so what you're have, saying is you want to make sure that the product's been around for at least one year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I can see what I want to do is right next to our, our search volume, there's a graph. I click on that. I'm going to go to one year. I want to see something steady that stays within. And this does. The top it breached was... <laughs> 2018. Which is okay. Great. Yeah. And then I everything else looks pretty steady. You have you're going to have your Christmas spike. That's that goes with just about every product. Yep. And you will have your winter time can be a little bit but babies are born every day. They need to stay to a certain temperature. So I I get it but babies are different. Babies need something warm. But something like this is protected all year round. It stops them from hitting their head on the crib from what I can see. So it's a cushion. So it's, it's going to be, it's not going to be seasonal. It's going to go all the way across. So this looks good to me. It actually looks really good. So seasonality, you're saying seasonality is another thing for one to focus on. So, you, you know, obviously the, the search volume is number one. So mm -hmm. when you're doing product research, make sure that search volume is 5,000 to 20,000 monthly search volume. Number two, you want to make sure that the product has been around for at least one year. And number three, you want to make sure that it's not seasonal and that it's ha it has steady sales all year long right absolutely okay seasonal is one of the hardest markets to work with there are some people that do it but um they know exactly how much they have to get in there and how long they have to sell it for and then they'll pause their listing until next year so we've typed in the word tent there's ninety thousand search volumes for the word tent that's extremely high and you would have a hard time as a new seller trying to get through that. So we need to get that search volume down. And we would actually be able to by taking the word tense and popping it into magnet and fitting it into the criteria. And we force our criteria to come forward. But this is what a graph looks like when it's seasonal. OK, so you can have uh, right here is winter time. OK, it drops to 18,000. But this is because it's on a big keyword. And then in the summertime, there's 143,000 search volume. And again, we drop. And then again, we're gonna go back up 200,000 in the summertime. It's it's scaling right now. We're already at 886, wait, it's higher. There we go, 90,000. So this is not what you want. You see the way this graph is right now? That's what it will do to your, if you have anxiety with products. It and will go look up, at it the, will go um, down. Look at the reviews as well. Look how, look how high they are, yeah. that's why we're saying that, you know, you shouldn't be looking for keywords that have more than 20,000 monthly search volume because also it's going to be very um, difficult to compete and, and be able to beat the competition. Absolutely. Some people will look at those numbers and say, oh my God, there are sellers making 100, 150,000, $200,000 a month. I want to do the same thing, you know, but they don't understand that trying to compete with these sellers is going to be near impossible and you need tens, if not hundreds of thousands for you to even get in and compete with these sellers if you wanted to do that. Absolutely. But that's not saying you can't get there. You can. You can get there, but you have to start somewhere. Right. So we start between 5,000 and 20,000 and scale to 20,000 and 30,000 and then 30 to 50,000. The more you go, the longer you're with this product, the more keywords that you're able 
to produce sales from, we keep scaling it up little by little. And before you know it, you are exactly where they are. But it will take time and work and your effort. It doesn't happen on its own. I shut my computer off, the sales come in and I do nothing. It doesn't work like that. Pay attention to your business. This is a real business. So watch if something's not working in your uh, advertising, in your keyword, let it go and focus on the ones that are producing and search for other keywords. You may find something very valuable when you continue to search. A new one may pop up that's generating a lot of sales. So always keep looking, keep trying to better your listing, keep trying to better those keywords and you have the best possibility of succeeding. So I hope that was valuable. If it was, smash that thumbs up button and do subscribe to the channel. But again, if you want BJK University to help you and if you want to work with Lorraine directly as well, uh, be sure to click the link below this video to schedule a call with one of our enrollment advisors and see if you qualify to join BJK University. Outside of that, we'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. Take care.